<laughs> hey guys, it's Jules. Hey, so I just uh, wanted to check in. I haven't been on for a minute. I have so many videos I'm editing and so it's taken me a minute to get some of these done. But So it's uh, February 15th today and I just got back from LA this morning. Um, I went out there just for a week because I needed to work on our business stuff. So I had to make some candles and our product labels for our uh, containers that we use. And so I spent a week over there and then I was helping my mom uh, shop for some just some new furniture for her room. I got some of those things done with her and then I got our product labels done uh, so I went down there for the week and I did that and then I just got back this morning and I'm like running on fumes right now because I only had an hour sleep last night or this morning because I was trying to get all the candles done since I was creating the labels for days and days so I'm standing in front of my new shelf now this was in the kitchen if you saw my room tour it was on this on this wall here so I moved the metal one that I had here, which was a little shorter. This one is a little longer this way, but I moved that to our extra room back there. And so I brought this one over because the white matches the rest of my room with other white furniture. But anyways, today I just wanted to, um, I will, oh, this is what I was really making the video for. So I am in the mood to make some candles. I caved and went and bought a sand and fog candle at Home Goods a few days before I left to LA. And I was telling myself, don't buy one, don't buy one, you have stuff at home to make one. And I wanted a candle because I didn't have any candles here in the house to burn. And I went and got one. It's a Tahitian vanilla. It smells good. I bought that, but I'm like, you know what? I have jars here. I have a lot of my candle stuff. I actually have two shelves now of my candle stuff. I have a couple of boxes here, some that have some candle jars that I'm going to recycle. So I have fragrance oils in here. I've got a um, cashmere one there, sensuous sandalwood, sea salt and lily. I have some sample bottles that's got, let me see, spiced honey and tonka. Oh, that sounds good actually right now. Very vanilla, ginger patchouli, crisp cotton, sweet Meyer lemon, uh, my eucalyptus and cotton. A bottle of lavender. Uh, let's see, orange peel. Pink peony, crisp cotton, sea salt and lily, apricot freesia. I like florals if you haven't noticed. Let me take these over here because I think right now I'm going to start with these. <laughs> So this is my block. It is from Shea and Company. So I really don't, I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the wax. I don't like the way that this cools. It looked like it was crystallizing. It didn't look very appealing. So, but I need to finish, finish it up so that I can just get rid of it. I'm going to take my wax over there. And then up here, I have some jars that I've, uh, I think I cleaned these out already. I'm not sure. No, these are not cleaned out. Okay. So I got to clean out a couple of these. I have some jars. So this one is wicked and it's ready to go. This one's already wicked. Yep, this is wicked and ready to go. Now this one is not clean and this one I need to clean. Look how pretty this jar is. Yeah, I don't want to get rid of that. I'm going to um just clean out some of the jars that I have. I do save food jars like the glass ones. I'm going to start one for just wax, old wax. So I'm just going to pour it out. I do use paper towels and um so um, I melt the wax, pour it out, or wipe it out, and then I just toss it. I feel like it's the best way to clean it. So maybe use uh, just some cheap paper towels. Once I wipe it out, like as best as I can get it, like once I can get the majority of it out, then I'll wash it. I'll wash it with soap and water, very warm water. That looks good. I do have notes on this one as far as how much wax goes in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump that one in there. I'm, I was still trying to figure out which wick works better with that wax. I'm used to my wax that I use for no label and I'm used to the wicks and the jars are all the same. They're this particular jar actually. But you got to do a lot of exper experimentation. I feel it's kind of a little science project. And uh, yeah, not all wax is created equal. So they're, you're going to get different reactions from them. So, okay. So this is pretty, it's as clean as I'm going to get it. It still has a little bit of residue in it. You can tell. I'm going to wash it out really good. You can use a popsicle stick to kind of help with cleaning it out. And I have it on low, but it's still warm water. And it's going to loosen the bottom first. Look at this, it looks like cottage cheese. You guys see that, it's just crumbling. I think I might have to mix something with it. I don't know, I might put some coconut oil in there. And I think that that might help a little bit. 
So I'm just gonna clean these out. I'm gonna re-wick them and then write down the grams of oil that they take or grams of wax that it'll take. And just get them poured. This is, this is not a tutorial at all, but I do wanna show you a little bit of how I do it. I'll write it all nice and neat later, but I just need to get the information done here. And this is a good way to figure out how much wax fits in there. And it was 16.93 ounce or 480 grams. So I'm gonna just write down the crackle glass jar with the rose gold lid. And then I'll write down, uh, it is a 16.93 ounce jar. And then I'll put the grams, cause that'll help me a lot. All right, so I'm gonna set this in the pot. It's on a very low heat. And you saw the last one, I was in there for just a little bit. Uh, this one is, I'll say the blue, blue number 18 jar. So this one, is it gonna tell me? Yes, so you'll see up here, it's, so it says 15 ounce or 425.25 grams. So it's a 15 ounce jar and 425.25 grams. So that's the blue one. And I talked about a white one here, a little white frost jar. This one says clear Ikea jar. I had another small one, but I have no clue where the heck that one is at. Let's see a little bit of liquid. Oh, see, we lost the... See, so that's why I write these things down before that happens. There's a little bit of liquid. So while I'm cleaning this one, I'll just sit this one in there. Okay, so I found the two jars, um, this one and the frosty one that was on my list, but look how ugly that looks. <laughs> yeah, look at the inside. It's all crackly. I mean, I know it's being burned and stuff, but I don't know, it just looks gross. Okay, so this one is a tapered Ikea jar. Okay, so clear glass, Ikea jar. It holds 300 grams. And then I've said here, there's a note that says use 280 grams. Um, but because I did 280 and there was extra room, I put a little hold 300. So I'm gonna leave it at 300 grams. I use Shea and Co wax with, oh, did I use the tube one? Okay. Okay, so I did a whip, a oh, tube wick, and it wasn't enough. It didn't burn well. Then I tried the whisper wick, and it wasn't hot enough. Uh, I'm gonna put a line through it so I know that I already tried it. I gotta do my math again because I think I want to go with the stronger heat throw, like 14 or something instead of 11. This one is the frosted one that I was talking about. I'm still gonna do one wick on these, and I'll look and see which one I use, and then pick a. Uh, maybe a thinner one i don't know so all of this is in progress i don't know which wick would work best with which candle jar yet my idea is to try and stay within the same kind of size so that i can use the same wicks for all three like these three back here are all about the same size and they'll probably burn around the same these three are about the same and then these three back here are about the same as far as this one might be a little bit wider which is why i'm trying thinner wicks but two of them just to see if it'll burn enough all the way around. This one I'm gonna use one because it's narrow and this one I'm gonna use one because it's narrow. Um, and I don't think I'm using the same size wick. No, it looks like I'm using a wider one on this one. I'm testing to see which ones will work. So next one, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick the Ikea one in there and melt it out. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna do, cause I already put the wick in there to try. So I'm gonna write notes down for that one. So my pink rose gold lid, it is a 15 ounce i thought 425.53 grams i'm just gonna make it at four yeah just leave it at 425 i'm not gonna do all that it is a 15 ounce jar we're gonna try 14 percent fragrance throw crackle glass it's 16.93 the blue one is 15 ounce and the gold checker on here my notes from before i i already had written 15 ounces i just got to decide which number I'm gonna stay with for all three of these because they're gonna be approximately the same. The crackle glass one, I'm gonna make them all like the gold checker. It'll be 15 and 425 grams. I'll leave it at that. The blue jar will do the same thing. And then I'm gonna write down the gold checker one because I don't think I've wrote that on there yet. So I'm gonna write the checker one right here. 425 grams and 15 ounce. So for the gold checker, I'm gonna try a 14% fragrance throw. For my 15 ounces, I'm gonna stay at 
372 grams of wax to 53 grams of fragrance oil. So let me do the math on that real quick. All right, so I'm gonna put it at the very bottom. 372 grams of wax and then 53 grams of fragrance oil. Because to get the 14%, I'll always have to use these numbers. It's just finding the right wick to burn it correctly. So I'm gonna end up highlighting that, but I'm gonna do the same thing here for all of my 15 ounce jars. So I've purchased these at uh, probably three different companies. I can't remember which one's the cheapest. My thing is because I want to experiment and see which wicks work better, I'm going to try different wicks for all three and see which one works for all three. Like if the wicks that I choose for this one, if it seems to work for this one, uh, melts good, uh, good fragrance throw, and it doesn't leave a bunch of soot, uh, then I'll use the same wicks for these two. And I have a sample package that I got from uh, the Wooden Wick Co. So. I just need to go through them and see which one it is that I'm gonna be using. So they have, this is the Crackling Booster Wick. The booster ones have a, a sliver of the same wood that is attached to the very middle and it kind of gives a little extra boost of flame and heat. So that's that one. The Whisper ones don't have that at all on it. So the Whisper meaning that it is only a flat piece. It doesn't have a center part in it. And if you look at the wig, it's just a plain piece of wood. Let me show you what a booster one looks like. And it's got this strip of wood in the very center of it. This is the Whisper 0.03. This one is the crackling booster, which gives a nice louder crackle. The Whisper wick gives a crackle, but it's very, very light. You can barely hear it. There is uh, another Whisper wick that's a number two, which I think is the thickness, N not the width, but the thickness of the wood itself. This one is the crackling wick. So it's separate from these. I went and bought the sample pack, which they gave me different ones to try. So if it's not these, oh, any of these, and I'm gonna, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I might have to get a different sampler. Okay, this one's the Crackling Wick. Uh, crackling Wick 3, Crackling Wick 4, Whisper 2 and Whisper 3, Whisper Booster with 0.3, and then just a Crackling Booster. So this is probably the thickest ones because they both have the boosters. So it has a strip of wood in the middle. So, so for the blue one, I am gonna just do two actually now three because I'm using the whisper ones and they're not very thick and they're not a booster so they don't let off a lot of heat. So the whisper wick two, it's a little bit more lighter than the threes. Oh wow, they're so paper thin. I have forgotten how paper thin they are. So the number threes are way thicker than the number twos, way thicker. Oh, you can totally see the difference. Let's <laughs> see if you could see it. This one here is the number three, this one here is the number two. So let's see, should I do three of these? So if I do three of these, and because it's so big, I think I'm not gonna go with the thinner one. You can see here. You can see how small this one is. I would need to use this for a really small candle. I kind of want to go with this one, which I think is a 625, 0.625. This one is the three quarter inch one. I don't think it's gonna have enough heat, and I think I'm gonna have to redo it and use this one, in my opinion, but I need to use them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use these ones. Now, if those don't work, these two don't work, maybe later on I'll probably just jump up to the three and probably use the same size up. So anyways, I think I'm gonna do that and use the, the thinner ones for that. And I'm gonna write it down before I forget to do that. So I'm gonna use the Whisper Wick times three, and I'm using the 0.02s, and I'm using the 0.625. Have to eyeball these. That's about where I kind of want it. These are thicker. I like the booster ones better, but I think I am gonna go, I'm gonna go with the same size as that, but I'm gonna go with two. So this is the 0.625. And it's possible that I reused it now that I'm looking at it because I have this in there, which means I already cut one up. Okay, so I've used it somewhere already. Actually, can I use that one? I can probably use this one, yeah. Is this half of it or no? It's a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna recycle that one. So I can actually use half of the 0.75, the so almost one inch, and then use both of these for that. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna do that. 
So I'm gonna use a Whisper Wick 0.03, and I'm gonna use the 0.75. Uh, um, one wick cut in half. I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball it. Is it gonna close? Oh, it closes all the way, good. That means that the wick is not too tall. And the half worked perfect for that one. And these, I'm now wondering maybe if I can cut the same. It's a little shorter than the crackle jars. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go back to the blue and note that I use one and a half wicks because I don't need all of them. I can use them later for a smaller jar if I decide if I want to, or if it works, I'll have extras for that. Yeah, look at that, that's perfect. Can't even see it. <laughs> okay, and see if it closes. Yep, it closes all the way. All right, so what should I do? Oh, I already wrote down I was going to use the Whisper Booster Wick number three, and I was going to use the 375. Now the 375s are the tiny, tiny, tiny ones. I want to try and use them all, and at least I can I can still burn them. It doesn't mean that I can't burn them. I'm just trying to see which ones I can just buy the pack of, because they're all samples. So this one's the Whisper Booster. So as I showed you before, it is the point three, so it is the thicker ones. It's not, they're not super flat and it's got the little uh, booster center, pe center piece of wood. Or did I use them already for something else? Actually did. Okay, I can't even use it. I only have one left. Okay, so I cannot use that size because I don't have enough. Um, I would use three. In this size jar for this width, I would use three wicks, but I only want to do two for this one. So I'm going to change the size of the wick. I'm going to use the 0.625. Actually, that one's a 375. Yeah, 375. So I'm going to go up a size, which is a 0.5s. It's the booster, so it should let off a lot more heat. And I'm going to go ahead and do one. Used one wig cut in half. I wasn't going to use the boosters today, but um, because I had it notated, I'm going to use them. Okay, I got those in there. Kind of even, I guess. I'm going to put this stuff away real quick. Okay, so this is what I use. Is my tin bowl mixing bowl I don't know the size you'd have to find whatever size you'd use I just wouldn't use the tiny one I use a little thermometer that I got I think it was on Amazon it is digital and it does use a like battery which I didn't know this I'm gonna have to change this out and use another one that uses like triple A's watch batteries is just too much for me I'm just not it did cost too much but anyways you'll need a thermometer of some sort um, I use this one only for my wax. I don't use this for cooking or anything. I have different utensils for that, but I use this at in, in LA and I use it here. So I have a wood, not a wood spoon. It's a plastic, this feels plastic to me. I also use these little cups for my oils, to measure my oils. And then of course you'll need your fragrance oil. And then, like I said, I'm gonna start with my jar. You'll need jars, you'll need wicks, and wick glue pads and wick clips. And if you're doing testing, you're gonna need a notebook. <laughs> and a pen. Most important part of making candles is your wax. Don't mind the mess, but here on my island, I have my dog food bin full of my already broken up wax. These work really good. I got this at uh, either Marshalls or Ross or TJ Maxx, one of the three. So I just break up the block and I broke it up here. But I do have a cutting board with paper towel on it and a knife that I barely use, but I will sanitize afterwards uh, and, and wash really good because it's wax. So I'm gonna keep that there and break off some pieces with this just in case I need to. It is kind of hard wax. You would have to feel it, but uh, it's not very soft. I can crumble it a little bit in my hand, just a little, but I had I really literally have to break it or use a knife for it. This is my notebook that I used when I was doing all of my testing in Los Angeles. So I literally grabbed a piece of, like a, another cut piece of the wick and I glued it next to actually started way over here so i wrote it down instead and i wrote down which wick i was using but i didn't like just writing it down so i, I used pieces of the wick and this was the second set of testing that i did the other one was like september and october and then i did this one in november so i cut a piece and taped it down and just used three sections of my sheet and wrote down that i used patchouli rosewood with whatever wick it was and then i wrote down notes at 9 40 to 2 40 it burned for five hours just so that i can get a time on how, how long that wax with that fragrance oil and the wick how long it will last so for my 13.5 ounce jars it burns 50 about 53 hours but this is how I did my testing I wrote just wrote down notes uh, like this one says it just too, it was just too much flame way too much flame so for the crackle glass jar it's a 15 ounce 
I want to do 14% fragrance throw. For the jars that are 425 grams or 15 ounce, I'm going to use the same exact math for all three. I'll link the video that I used, but I'm just going to do that real quick while I'm here. So it's 425 grams of uh, wax or the size of the jar divided into 114% gives me 372 that means 372 actually 373 373 grams that i need minus the 425 that is the volume of the jar equals to 52 grams of fragrance oil needed okay so these are for my 15 ounce jars so for these two i'm going to stay the same because they're all about the same size they're also 15 I'm gonna keep it as 15. Actually, one of them is 20. So you know what? I'm gonna keep it as a 20 ounce. It is a wider jar than these two, so I'm gonna change this. 20 ounce jar, and it says 567 grams. So let's do the math, 567 gram. I'm gonna do 14% fragrance throw, so I'm gonna divide it by 114% at 114 equals 497, 567 minus the 497 is gonna give me 70 grams of oil. So we'll do 497 grams of wax to 70 grams of fragrance oil. Okay, guys, that's what we do. So once you know the size of your jar, that it should be super, super, super simple. All right, I'm ready. Hard part is uh, finding which one I want to use. So if you're going to use fragrance oil, like two or three different fragrance oil, let's say for the crackle glass with the rose gold lid, this one here. So if I want to use two or two different scents and it requires 52 grams of fragrance oil, then I'll have to split that 52 into what? 25, 26 grams. So I'll use 26 of one and 26 of the other. If you're going to use three, divide that amount by three. Or if you want more of like the lavender, then, you know, you use two thirds of this one and the third is the other one. You know what I mean? So that's how I figure that out. What do I want to do? This one's my cocoa butter cashmere, super pretty, which is a uh, one that is in addition to what we use over there. We use two different scents for, for that one. I'm gonna use some coconut oil to my wax. Um, I wanna see if it'll calm down the cooling process or if it'll help this wax give it a smoother uh, look to it. So I don't wanna add a lot, so I'm just gonna kind of guess right now and then do a little bit more research, but I know that you can mix that with the wax. So I'm gonna have to do these like per jar. So I'm gonna just put the amount of wax and oil for just one jar, because they're all gonna be different scents. What I like to do first is I turn on my scale. So set my tin in there and then I will change the unit to grams so then I'll go ahead and tear it so it goes to zero so knowing that this particular crackled glass jar um, is gonna have to have 373 grams of wax I'm gonna go ahead and start adding that I'm gonna go to about 3 330 and then let me get a percentage I think and I'm just using a stick a wooden stick and scooping it out hey Siri What's 20% of 373 grams? 20% times 373 is 74.6. It would be 75 grams. So if I just did 300 of the wax, I'll go to 373 of, so it's 300. So I'll do 70, the rest of it is gonna be in coconut oil. 375 okay I'll leave it like that it is just a little bit over but not 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 too bad still doesn't change anything I'm still gonna do 52 grams of the oil so now that I have that in here I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the pot just gonna let it melt as that's going I need to figure out now my oil I'm gonna tear it I think I'm gonna mix these two uh, sweet Meyer lemon and lavender I think that's gonna make a beautiful scent so I just don't want lemon. I don't want just a, a sweet lemon. I think lemon, the citrus is good to add to something else. Lavender by itself, I think it's a little too powerful too. But that's just me. I think I'm gonna do half and half. So I think I'm gonna go, let me see. So we're gonna do, what did I say, 26 grams? Woo, one more drop. 26, okay. Oh, that smells like candy. Lavender always smells good. So I'm gonna do lemon and lavender. I think that's gonna go good. Yes, good, 52. So one jar fit uh, 
52 ounces. So now I'm gonna leave that alone. Let's go to the wax. It's melting well. I'll check the temperature once the wax is completely melted. One thing I forgot to tell you guys is that I want to make my jar, it says room temperature is fine, but it always feels a little cooler than that. I like to warm it up just a little bit because um, I, when I pour it, I don't want it to be so cold that it just starts to shrink up so fast. So I wanna make it warm. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna warm it up really quick. So this needs to get to 200 degrees and I think it's about there because it was a 180. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll wait and let it go to 200. 197 okay it's almost there but i'm gonna go ahead and put these in there just okay finally okay goodness now i need to let it cool down to 180 and then you put your oils in it it cools down pretty quick so i'm gonna check it here again in a second still smells like coconut <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it comes out. I hate coconut, but if it smells too much like coconut, I'm gonna um, not put the coconut oil in there. Okay, I'm gonna pour it. It's down to 177 now, so. All right, the lemon and lavender. Just gonna stir it for a couple minutes. All right, I'm just gonna pull out the jar that I had in the pot. A little warm and I don't want it to be super warm because then it's gonna start burning off my fragrance oil instead of when I light it oh damn it's hot oh it held a lot of heat I didn't want it that maybe I'll use another jar that's so hot yeah that's really hot actually I'll just grab the gold one I just put in there it's just a little bit warm it's the same amount and everything so so just pour it over on top Wow, so my measurements were pretty on point because you're supposed to leave about a quarter of the wick exposed above the oil or the wax and I have probably about a quarter size, quarter inch of the wick. Okay, it's not too hot so I'm just going to move it to the back counter here. I'm just going to do a quick wipe right here. I'm not going to clean it all out but I'm going to get some of it because I don't want it to mess with the measurements of the next one. It might not but still. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with uh, my fragrance oil just to get the majority of that out. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna tear it. To do the blue one, it's gonna be the same amount of wax. 300, at least 300 of wax. Okay, there it is, 374. All right, 373, 374, I'm gonna put it in the pot. Okay. Fragrance oil. See this cocoa butter? That's kind of warm. Let's try sandalwood and cocoa butter. I think that's gonna smell amazing. I don't wanna do one cents. I wanna be adventurous. Okay, 52. Oh, I was supposed to do 26. Sensuous sandalwood. but I didn't want. That's fine, I'm just gonna stop. All right, so I got the three biggest jars or wide open mouth jars done. Now I'm gonna do these. And looking at so far, let me show you. Um, it's drying now finally but it's not drying how it did before so far it actually looks better but if you can see it looks like there's like cracks or something in it I'm trying to show you the texture there and this one looks a lot smoother and I'm hoping it's due to the coconut oil that I put in there so yeah hmm so that has 20% coconut oil as well as this one this is the second one this one has 20% and then this one I put 25% so let's see if there's a difference in there and then I washed out the Ikea one and I have the frosted one, the littler one, re uh, not ready, but it's already clean. And the no label one, I didn't put my wick in that one, but I wanna get these three done as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna do these three. So I'm gonna start with this one. I'll put this in the pot to go start getting warm. Good morning guys. Oh, I left my TV on in my room. Hang on. 
So I'm getting ready to leave. I have to go to, uh, to go to the bank and handle some financial stuff for our company for No Label. And then I gotta go to Costco and get some groceries. Yesterday I left off uh, showing you guys just a few of the candles that I had gotten done. And I have, I have them all sitting here. They've been cooling all night. And I've noticed that the wax is kind of soft. Like I can press my finger in it. They smell bomb though, damn. Oh, I must say. I just want to show you what the tops look like and shockingly enough the one that i thought was going to look nasty because i didn't put any coconut oil in it didn't do too bad and i'm wondering if maybe i didn't do the temperatures right but i went through and and followed their instructions at shea and company um and they didn't it they changed it around a little bit so they were a little bit more specific the wax didn't dry the same way this time like it did last time and now they had more specific instructions anyways let me sh let me turn the camera around and i'll show you what i did and you'll see a thumbprint or fingerprint marks in there and some discoloration in some of them because some of the oils had like the cinnamon one was very very dark brown so it turned it a little bit pinkish so let me show you so i made nine candles that took me like six hours <laughs> to do for one it took a lot longer to melt this wax but also each of them have a specific scent and i had to also figure out do the math as far as how much was 25 percent of the wax that i was using that way I knew how much of the coconut oil to add in there. So some of them have, to, actually these two are 20% and then the rest are 25% except for the last one, which is this one, which is straight up the Shane Company soy wax. You'll see my finger mark, but it actually didn't dry too bad. And you might see how it's like puckered right here. It looks a little strange, but this is nothing in comparison to what it was the first time I used this wax. It's a little bit of sweat marks, meaning that there's a little bit of the, the oils coming up on top. So you might be able to see little wet spots, but see how it dried kind of lumpy? Actually, but this is still smoother than what it used to dry as. Anyways, I just want to show you guys, and what I need to do is get uh, some of the angled scissors that you can go in, down, uh, into a jar and clip. It cuts your, your wicks pretty good, because these are too tall, and I thought they were going to be just right, but they are a little, a little bit too tall. I have to cut them down to at least a quarter inch, and this is at least a half inch, maybe a little bit taller. But they look nice. I mean, I'm unstocked for a while. These will give me 50 to 60 hours of burn time somewhere in there. So there. So I have all of my candles done. So I just want to show you my candles. I think they came out pretty good. So anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. I got to go buy groceries and stuff. You guys have a good day. Bye, everyone.